Hey guys, Bruno here from Flight Tech Computers. We have our episode today of Tycon Tuesdays here with Seth Allen from Tycon. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things here on these uh, episodes, uh, some technical questions that might come up and some solutions that we have going on. And today we want to talk about the remote power systems and how to calculate for them. Sure. Uh, one of the most important things that, you know, people ask us is how do we power this equipment that we're getting from Flight Tech? Uh, as everybody knows, we sell a lot of uh, wireless radios, cameras, all kinds of things that are supposed to be outdoor rated devices. But sometimes you have a concert or a construction site. So how do you get power out there when there's no power? And that's where Tycon comes in and, and really has a great tool for calculating and figuring out what to use in those situations. Um, so, Seth, today I wanted to ask your help in uh, helping us calculate some some power requirements that we might have for simple projects. Sure. You know? um, so I think we can start with, you know, as everybody knows, there's uh, ubiquity cameras, great cameras. Everybody loves using them. Um, and maybe that's a good point for us to look at, you know. Uh, I was thinking uh, we can look at something simple like the UVC G4 Pro. Okay. You know, we can get that on a calculator. Um, I also know you guys have the Easy Bridge point-to-point uh, -point solution. I mean, those are great for simple plug-and-play uh, deployment. So that would be really interesting. Again, like a construction site, these guys can just come up there, kind of point them, and they're ready to go. Um, so you think we can run that calculation? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that's the... We have a design team that does this on a daily basis, right? And a lot of people get intimidated by solar because they haven't done this before. It's very simple, and so we'll show you how to do that today. Uh, you can access our calculator from our website. If you go to our support tab, hit calculators, we have our remote pro system power selection calculator, right? Mouthful. Okay. But uh, very simple. We just need to know the, the few variables, plug them in. So first, we're going to do that. You said the, uh, the G4 Pro, correct? Yeah. yeah. So let's, type, let's uh, search that up. G4 Pro, because what we need to do is find the total power draw and the voltage requirements of all the devices first. Got it. So we're going to look at the G4 Pro, click on this, and look at the data sheet. And the data sheet will tell us, um, you know, all of that information that we're needing. We're going to scroll down here, and uh, they list max power consumption at 12 and a half watts. Uh, we know it's powered by PoE. Um, you know, in, in searching that, we know that that's going to actually be a 48 volt at 802.3 AF, right. which means it's uh, 802.3 compliant, right? right? So we've got the uh, 12 and a half watts. Then let's look up the easy bridge. So being 802.3 AF, all we really have to worry about is the voltage, right? Correct. Um, that it's 48 volts. So Correct. We got to take into consideration that it's always going to be all standardized PoE is essentially 48 volts. Right. So whenever we see PoE, PoE+, plus, PoE++, plus plus, we automatically should know 48 volts. 48 right? volts to 56 volts. Okay. Right? So okay. if you have a higher power, um, maybe a 30 watts, that's typically going to be 56 volts. Okay. So, Got it. Got it. So now let's look at the easy bridge. The easy bridge, I know it's 24 volts. Um, we make that device. Uh, here are the power requirements. 24 volt passive PoE at 4 watts. So all those uh, math professionals, 12 and a half watts plus four watts. Uh, 16 and, 16 and a half. half. Perfect. <laughs> Nicely done. So we'll go 16 and a half watts. We know that now. Hours of operation, we're going to leave it running 24 hours a day. Right. Okay. But let's say that you're going to do, a, instead you're powering some, some LED lights or okay. an irrigation pump. That will drastically affect the size of your system. So that's why it's important. Don't leave everything at 24 if it's not really going to be powered. Next, we need to know the average hours of peak sunlight. Okay. So pick a city. Um, Doral, Florida. Perfect. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to hit look up, uh, and we're going to type in Doral, Florida. You can also look in uh, or look it up by the zip code. Okay. So zip code, city, state, um, Doral, Florida, hit submit. And this is going to tell us the peak sunlight hours, average hours per day. Okay. We want to look at the lowest month. That right. way we know if it's powered in winter, it's going to be powered year round, right? Right. right. So in Florida or in Doral, we average 4.44 hours of peak sunlight every day. Okay. So we're in January, we have five hours of peak sunlight every day. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that you only have five hours of sunlight, it's the peak when the sun is gonna be in contact with that solar panel. So when you when you look at it, are you just finding the lowest number or yes. are you looking always at January? 
No, I, typically it's December. Okay. Most areas it's going to be December that yeah. has the the lowest. But got it. so you want to look at that. Um, now we've got all of our knowns, right? Next, you can type in the extra hours of battery backup needed. Let's say you want some extra autonomy in case you have some cloudy days. Sure. I usually start at zero. Okay. I, I want to know the minimum system that I need. Sure. So I'm going to hit calculate, and that's it. It ought to, it tells us that we need 102 watts of solar array and 66 amp hours of battery bank. That's the minimum requirement. Got it. Okay. Um, and then it tells you which systems uh, would work for you. So f- this, we have four different... Uh, uh, outcomes, suggested systems. I like the last one, the RPS 2448-100-170. And we try to make our part numbers intuitive, right? So this tells us RP for remote pro. Got it. S is our smaller aluminum enclosure. 2448 means we have 28 volt or 24 volt and 48 volt. And I'll explain okay. it a little bit. Okay. Dash 100, that's our battery bank. So we have a 100 amp hour battery bank. Got it. 170 is our solar panel array. Okay. So let's take a look at that system. So we're going to go back to Flytech, type in RPS 2448-100-170. All of our remote pro systems are complete. You get your solar panel array, battery bank, enclosure, solar controller, and all of the cables and mounting hardware. Got it. So everything that you need to connect to your equipment um, j- except for the pole. So you you provide the pole, and we have everything that we need here. So all the mounting hardware that comes with these kits, they're all for pole mounting. Correct. Pole or wall mount. Or wall so mount. you can mount to a wall as well. Got it. So, but most are most people are mounting to a pole. So, okay. so this is what the system would look like. Um, inside that enclosure, you've got your battery bank and you have your solar controller. So this is the device that you would get. Uh, with this system. This is our PWM solar controller. It's an 8 amp. Uh, It has 48 volt PoE output. So this is going to power your G4 camera. And then on the back side, it has a 24 volt DC output, wire terminal output. Got it. So in order to connect to your easy bridge, you're going to want to add a DC converter. This is our TP-DCDC-1224. And what that will do is take in the 12 volt or the 24 volt DC and give you 24 volt PoE to power the easy bridge. So both of these devices will be able to power your equipment. So you're just adding a couple of ethernet pigtails basically. Okay. So the, the, the kit already comes with the controller, you said. Correct. Right. So really all the extra we need is just, is just adding that extra part, this extra part. Okay. Okay. Now, we most of our applications are in the U.S., but we do a lot of systems outside the U.S. Yeah. as well. And so a quick way to do that is you can hit look up like we did earlier. And here's our PV Watts. Um, this is a, a separate database that's mm-hmm. controlled, you know, that uh, um, is monitored um, internationally. Mm-hmm. And now we can type in any city in the world and find out the peak sunlight. Nice. So yeah. give me an international city. Bogota. Bogota, Colombia. So we're going to type in, make sure I spell it right, Colombia. My mother-in-law is from Colombia, so I better spell it right. And I'm going to hit go. And make sure that this is the uh, the map of Bogota. So that is our area. And I want to look at the latitude. Four and a half, uh, 4.6 is our latitude, 4.6 degrees. Okay. So from here, I'm going to hit go. And here's the information. Tilt is very important when it comes to solar, right? right. And solar angle, right. right? You're If you're north of the equator, you always want them south-facing, right? You don't need to go southeast, southwest, go south-facing. Okay. If you're south of the equator, you want them north-facing. North. Okay. So on our website, you can see what the angle should be. Okay. So let's go to our solar panel tilt calculator. We know that we're at, let's just say, 5 degrees for simplicity. Okay. We're going to hit calculate, and our optimum winter angle is 5 degrees. So you set the panel at 5 degrees. You can change it, but it's such a a minor difference between summer and winter, especially since they're so near near the equator, that it won't matter. Let's leave it at 5 degrees, and that way we don't have to mess with it during the year. So I'm going to change our tilt to 5 degrees, leave everything else as is, and this will tell us, our average hours of peak sunlight 
per month in Bogota, Colombia. So we see that March is actually their lowest at the five degrees, mm. 4.16. Okay. So we can just type that in, change that to one six. And it hasn't changed our system much, right? Um, there's not enough change in that, right? 4.4 to 4.16. So same system, same setup, okay. but now we have um, the, uh, the optimum system based on your location, because that's going to drastically affect whether you're installing in New York or Florida. Right. Drastic sunlight differences in yeah, the summer months, right? Fun. Or in the winter months. And your total power drop. Yeah. Um, so, any questions on that? Yeah. So, okay. So, especially for the international customers, um, you know, batteries are always tricky to sure. ship internationally. Yep. So, can we look at the same systems and just kind of remove the batteries? Do you guys have the systems like a SKU already for the systems without the batteries? Great question. So it's not necessarily tricky to ship. Uh -huh. It's just can be more expensive to okay, ship. Okay, gotcha. So because all of our, the, the lead acid batteries are non-hazardous. Oh, okay, right? gotcha. Um, we can ship lithium batteries, but that can be tricky shipping outside the country. Gotcha. So if you are sourcing your own batteries locally in that country, then we have a part number that will be basically a no battery system. Gotcha. And so it will be a complete system minus the batteries. You source them as long as we can provide the weights and dimensions. That way you're finding batteries that will fit gotcha. uh, inside our enclosure. Absolutely. And so the calculator still works great because it'll tell you essentially the system with the batteries and you just say, hey, let me remove the batteries and this is how much battery I need here. Locally exactly. And get that. Uh, all the batteries for, or all the systems have lead acid batteries, you said? Correct. Okay. Got you. So if, if we do need to ship them, that, that's not an issue. It's just not at all. The, yep. the weight of them is... Just make sure that you've tested those batteries. Mm -hmm. we've, we've done extensive testing on batteries, mm -hmm. and there is a difference right, okay. in, in uh, battery manufacturers. Gotcha. So. Okay. Interesting. Um, the Power Ranger for the systems, like what's, what's the maybe the smallest to the biggest system, you guys, that we can get... Sure. Um, from, from you guys. So our smallest system is the RPDC 12-9-15. Oh, yeah. So it's a die cast aluminum enclosure, yeah. nine amp hour battery okay. with a 15 watt solar panel. Okay. So typical application would be that part-time power, right? You're doing a, an irrigation pump and need to run that pump for 15 sure. minutes, 30 minutes a day. Sure. Uh, so something small, gate sensor, Okay. Uh, or fence sensor, something okay. like that, that doesn't have a lot of draw okay. uh, and, you know, just very small. Uh, and then they, we range up to 2,100 watts of solar array. 2,100. So this is going to be 350 watts continuous power. So several PTZ cameras, access points, that kind of thing. That does come with a seven foot mast. Okay. So for any system that's 720 watts and, and above, uh, we provide the mast because... These are giant sails. Mm. You don't want to put them on a, you know, high up on a tower or anything like that. You want to keep it low to the ground. Sure. Um, we have a, a, a steel enclosure or a ground mount aluminum enclosure that will hold a larger battery bank okay. to provide enough power, right? Okay. So what we've noticed is typically what you want to have is about the same amount of amp hours of battery bank to the watts of solar array. Mm. So if I'm going to have a 720 watt solar array, I want to have usually close to a 720 amp hour battery bank. Gotcha. Obviously the, the, the peak sunlight will kind of t affect how much battery bank you actually need. Or, you know, for example, when we, uh, going back to our calculator using this scenario, you say, you know what, I really need to have an extra 24 hours of battery bank mm -hmm. just to make sure that, cause our systems are designed to run 24 hours a day. So this will be fine, but you want an extra 24 hours of autonomy. You can, uh, Throw that in, hit calculate. Now we need 132 amp hours of battery bank. And when 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 that when you need that extra time of power, is it just as simply as adding more batteries, or do you have to add more solar as well? Typically, it's just adding more batteries. Okay. Like if you're, however, let's say that we wanted to. We've had these requests where somebody says, you know, I want five days of of uh, extra battery wow. bank. It's not. It's not a great idea, yeah, right? Because yeah. you can have 170 watts of solar. That's what I would need. Yeah. But now I ha need 330 amp hours of battery bank. If you drain those batteries, then you're not going to have enough solar 
to recharge those batteries. So you would need, so to, you would need to go out there and charge it, hook it up to a generator oh, and recharge wow. the battery. So yeah, it's amazing. usually you want it a one to one. You can have it, you know, a little bit extra solar charges them faster batteries, extra batteries. If you just have that extra draw or yeah. pull, uh -huh. then it'll take a while to, to recharge. Gotcha. And that's something, obviously, if somebody has a special request a little bit outside of the calculator, uh, that they can reach out and, and kind of say, hey, I need I'm, have this special project and we can kind of custom design that for them as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a design team that's on standby. Like, we're ready to gotcha. go. We just need to know the part numbers for the devices you're powering yeah. and the location where you're installing. Okay. City, state, or the zip code. Okay. And then we're able to design it completely, give you the components, the, the remote pro part number, and then any accessories. If you need a PoE switch, if you need a DC converter, um, we can provide all of that information in in a quick, uh, j just like this. We show you the results with everything that you need. Gotcha. Basically, the the bomb. Okay. All right. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I think there's uh, a lot of interesting things here for us to talk about. We can also look at. Uh, some of the solutions you guys have in the future for multiple devices. I know you guys also have wind turbines. So mm -hmm. uh, I want to save that for another video that sure. we can maybe dive into a little bit deeper. But a lot of interesting things to do in, in terms of the calculator and seeing, you know, for your special projects and whatever you might need to do and figuring out beforehand uh, the exact power you're going to need. Right. So appreciate you guys having that. And, and it's uh, very interesting. So good. Well, uh, appreciate Seth being here and uh, helping us out with this and uh, appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get the latest from Flytech. Thanks.